Yes, yes. Come on, give it to me, baby. Who doesn't like a big 16 incher? Woo! Excited. We're all excited. I'm feeling a bit silly today. Let's review this MacBook Pro 16. And hey, if you like a review that's straight down the line, kick you in the plums, then baby, I'm your man. So if you're gonna do it, do it right, right, do it with me. Sub up, join the woo train, hit that bell, ding a ling a dong. And the good thing about this review is I'm actually personally interested in buying one of these. So I've really scrutinized the hell out of this 16 inch. I had both models, i7, i9, the Radeon Pro 5300 and the Radeon Pro 8 gigabyte 5500 and yes I do know they're not RX 5500s it's in my brain I can't help it I even call AMD graphics ATI sometimes I'm a bad boy and I need to be punished now does this thing live up to the hype we've seen all these propaganda videos basically paraphrasing you know Apple's press release but I'm gonna get really down to the brass tacks and when it comes to price they're fairly well priced for what you get you get a lot of custom stuff you know 16 by 10 display touch bar I don't know if you want it or not but you get it you know t2 chip I hate it but it's there it's added cost also storage controllers custom storage controllers rated SSDs like there's a lot of custom stuff here a lot of PC manufacturers they use a lot of off-the-shelf stuff a lot of this is the expensive more custom stuff so I think the price is justified been a little bit more you also get that great resale value as well now the two models i have is the base model i7 and the top of the line i9 64 gigs with the i9 also the 8 gigabyte radeon pro 5500 and the i7 has 16 gigs ram and the radeon pro 5500 i forgot to say the m didn't i m mobile build quality is exactly the same like last ones i will get onto some issues you really need to know about things to check for at the end of this video you definitely want to check for these things because it's going to bite you on the bum if you don't and you will get an inferior product if you're not checking for these things so stay tuned for my little chat at the end but the build quality is solid it's good i don't know why they still got a top bezel on the display but whatever is this a placeholder for a new design next year i don't know but it is what it is it's very good quality it looks beautiful a piece of art it is really a piece of art there it does look like it's you know feeble but no nah, these things are pretty tough and even though this is a big 16 incher we all love the big one that's what he said Still comes in at only two kilos. That's 4.3 pounds and 16.2 millimeters thick. So it is a little bit thicker and that's 0.64 of an inch. It is amazing how thin and light this is. It is actually thinner and lighter than an XPS 15 and it's a 16 inch. It's pretty much thinner than all the 15 inch laptops other than the old wank pad X1 carbon extreme thing or whatever. But that's more thermally challenged. So hey, this is good. 16 inch, still lighter than all the 15 inches. You can't complain. I will have a video comparing this to the XPS 15. Will this surpass the XPS 15? Well, stay tuned for that video. It comes with the same four Thunderbolt. In 2016, I didn't like it. It's nearly 2020. Let's move on. I would love an SD card slot, but then you would take away a Thunderbolt 3 port for that. I prefer the bandwidth of the Thunderbolt 3. You just need to make sure you have spare dongles and you always carry them. I'm not going to spend too much time on the sound. The sound is the best sound you're going to get on any laptop. You also have studio quality recording and you'll hear a bit of that later. Yeah, the mics are good if you're close enough to it. Now, when it comes to the keyboard... You don't have to worry about the keyboard anymore. It is solid. It's really good. It is exactly the same as the Magic Keyboard that goes on the iMac. Just slightly modified version of that. You know, we know they're tough as old boots. You'll have no problems with durability. It's not as good as the old Magic Keyboards that are on the 215. It's not quite that level, but no one's going to complain about the keyboard anymore. You don't have to worry about it. Amazing trackpad. The best trackpad you're going to get on the laptop. I will say I do get a numb finger because there's no actual, you know, give in the trackpad. It's a simulated click, so, you know, you're pressing on hard surface all the time. You will get a numb fingertip every now and then, but apart from that, it's just the best thing ever. 
Now, when it comes to displays, oh my God, where do I start with this thing? Amazing 16 inch display, color accurate, everything you want. Problem is, I had two models, right? One's 530 nits, one's 470 nits, mobile tech review, 420 nits. Which one are you gonna get? Who friggin' knows? And that leads into one thing. Make sure you check the brightness of your screen. Get a color monkey or a spider or something. Check it. The one I'm thinking of keeping is 470 nits. Annoys me that it's not 500 and the i7 model is actually 50 nits brighter. That friggin' annoys me. That being said, you do get, you know, pretty much 100% P3, 83 or whatever, Adobe RGB. And if you have a look at that nice tone curve there, you can see how it lifts up on the blacks. One thing that's amazing about these Mac displays is you see details in darker areas that you don't see on other displays. It's actually a curse in one way because you will edit a video and you'll see the detail in it, but then you upload it to YouTube and no one else can see it unless they have one of these displays. So blessing and a curse. It's one of the best displays, 16 inch amazing. I love it. Just the quality control, which one am I gonna get? 420 nits for mobile tech reviews one. Like I'll be taking that straight back. Oh, and one thing with the display, you can change the Hertz on it. So you can change it to 48 Hertz. If you're doing 24 frames per second content, video editors want this, you can do it. Battery life, 100 watt hour battery. Yeah, it's better than the last one. You will get 11 hours if you're just doing regular web surfing and stuff like that. I reckon it's even a little bit better than that. I reckon they've understated it a bit. Class leading battery life, 96 watt hour power. Still a little bit of battery drain, not as much as it used to be in Windows. Oh my God, the battery drain is just nuts. So if you use Windows a lot, you're probably gonna kill your battery a lot sooner than you would in Mac OS. When it comes to performance, I have so many videos on this. Check out the link in the description for the playlist. Just a gaming Mac OS, gaming on Windows, compared it to the XPS 15, compared i7 versus i9 versus 5300 versus 5500. So many tests I've done. And is it faster than the last 15 inch? Yes, it is. It's not always gonna be. It will depend on your workflow, but that is not a joke. When you get the eight gigabytes of video memory, she goes off like a frog in a sock. She goes hard. With the Radeon Pro 5500M, it can be up to 80% faster because you've got that extra four gigabytes of memory. Anything that's memory sensitive in the video card, is gonna be big gains. But one thing I notice is this. Now, there is one thing I notice going from a, like a high-end desktop to a laptop, and that's like scrubbing performance. Even though pretty much all the good 15-inch laptops, they play back, you know, 4K footage. This is at full, and you watch drop frames indicator there. I'll play it back at full, no problems. By the way, it's on battery. No fan noise at the moment. But you always notice from a high-end desktop a difference in scrubbing. It's just not quite as responsive. It's just the latency is a little bit, you know, less. It's just not quite as good. Even though it plays back the 4K content, no problem. I just noticed the difference. This is the first laptop I cannot notice the difference from a desktop. It feels like a desktop. And in essence, I really think this is an iMac Pro put in a portable computer. It really is. It performs like it. It performs exactly like a desktop. I cannot tell the difference. If you actually, you know, put this on an external monitor and compared it to a desktop and didn't tell me which one's which, I would not be able to tell the difference in playback, certainly no. But just the scrubbing, it's just super smooth. And by the way, the i7 5300 graphics was not like this. And this is literally like a desktop. I cannot describe how this is any better than that. What I will say is that this is something you're not going to pick up on with the benchmark. Yes, the Puget System benchmark will pick up on this because it does have a playback score, but most benchmarks won't pick up on this. And just, you know, even though every other laptop, you know, 15 inch with good graphics card will play back at full, no problem. It's just not going to have this super responsive buttery. It's just beyond belief. It feels like a desktop. It just feels so good in that timeline and this applies for Final Cut 2 and by the way no fan noise still and I'm actually recording straight into this this is where the audio is being recorded into this still no fan noise and I'm in Premiere on battery so yeah that 
I can actually really feel it in the timeline. It literally feels butter smooth compared to any other laptop I've used, and I've used laptops with desktop components. Now, the graphics in these are truly outstanding, especially when you consider that they are pro. So really, you should be comparing these with, you know, laptops with quadros in them. So I'm not talking Dell XPS 15. I'm talking about Dell Precision, Lenovo P1, ZBook workstations and stuff like that. With quadro graphics, that's what you should be comparing this to. The 5300 comes with four gigabytes and 20 compute units. The 5500 comes with 24 compute units. So that's different to the RX 5500, which only has 22 compute units. So don't think it's exactly the same thing. Even though I say it, it's just in my brain, it's not the same thing, especially when you can use Pro drivers and you've seen in Windows with spec per few. With SolidWorks, it was like 15 times faster than the XPS 15 just because it had Pro drivers. So amazing graphics they have in it now. Thermal performance. Now with the improved thermals up to 12 watts sustained, that thing is really I even run Cinebench with the GPU 100% lit with the i9 model and still kicked out basically an i7 performance in Cinebench while the GPU was being hammered 100%. So she goes hard. Don't worry about that. One downside to that is, yes, the fans are going to come on earlier. They're going to stay on longer, slightly louder than the last model, and you're going to notice them more. That is what it is. No upgradability, of course. It's a Mac buy what you need whatever you can afford get the highest of whatever spec i will say if you're just going to do gaming and stuff like that get the 5300 there's no benefit to the 5500 for gaming and that i7 was pretty good but i can tell you now in the timeline with the i9 and the radeon pro 8 gigabyte 5500m i could really notice the difference when i was editing in final cut and premiere pro in the timeline just the smoothness this has nothing to do with render times the render times will be better too but just how smooth it is butter smooth if you can get to the i9 and the good graphics go for it you'll thank me in the end so yes apple you have done it finally you give us what we want except you numb nuts didn't give us wi-fi 6 what the actual it is really disappointing that's the only con against this really and the varying brightnesses as you might get with these displays also i will say test the thermals on this because my i7 it was only maintaining the same amount of wattage as the last model it was well down on the performance that apple said it should be getting with that 12 watts extra sustained that i7 was a dud i know ash from vitudio had i7 as well he could maintain 60 watts i could only maintain 50 watts so you really want to check the thermals. If you can't maintain 60 watts in Cinebench and it's like room temperature in your house, return it, get another one and check out that display as well. If that's like 400 nits, that's a boomerang. That goes straight back. I don't even know how to let that stuff out of the factory, to be honest. So apart from those things, stay tuned for my comparison to the XPS 15. Will this be the laptop of the year? Well, give me a few more days of it. Give me another week of it or so. I will have the best laptops of 2019 video coming out very very soon i thought i knew what was going to be the best laptop things may have just changed so i'd like to really thank you guys for watching let me know what you guys think down there in the comments catch you in the next one guys tally ho